Good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Trinity Church. I'm grateful for those of you who take the time every week to tune in and pray with us. Just a few announcements. First of all, an invitation to join us for curbside communion from 10 to 11 this morning following the broadcast of this liturgy. And if you're going to be a little late, don't hesitate to text me on my cell phone to let me know. We'll wait. 414-899-9004. We're going to be continuing curbside communion through the month of August. And then along with the vestry and input from congregation members, we'll be reevaluating how we will proceed forward. I bid your continued prayers for the health and well-being of our congregation and for our community. Those of you who keep track of all things COVID know that our caseload in Wisconsin has been growing. And so it's particularly important now in this time that we do our best to keep each other safe and to keep each other in our prayers. This morning, our music is a compilation of encore presentations because our parish organist and choir master, Tom Kester, is away this week visiting his son on what will be Tom's last weekend off for the near future. So we bid Tom and Maria safe travels during this weekend. And now, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please join me in praying Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. 
The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, and he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place. And the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children." The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I lived in southeast Tennessee, one of the features of church life all over the area was an event known as Dinner on the Grounds. Nearly every church, large and small, rural, urban and suburban, Pentecostal to Presbyterian, and even some Episcopalians would have at least one of these do-it-yourself covered dish outdoor feasts sometime between mid-spring and late fall. 
heaps of fried chicken, pot after pot of chicken and dumplings, pulled pork and roast beef, seemingly endless variations of macaroni and cheese, potato salad and three bean salad abounded. Every manner of vegetable casserole was also on offer. And don't even get me started about the dessert table, which is where the young'uns always headed first, and for good reason. And all of it was washed down with gallons of way too sweet iced tea. These dinners usually took place immediately after the Sunday morning worship time and were often followed by a gospel music concert. As poor college students who loved going to church, plenty of us made the rounds. Back then, these opportunities were advertised in the local paper. You could literally find free Sunday dinner almost every week if you were so inclined. Now, here's the intriguing part. You know where the largest spreads of food were to be found? Let me give you a hint. They weren't on the linen tablecloths at the fancy church downtown. If you wanted the amazing food and the excellent hospitality, you had to get out of town and off the map. And there, at the end of an unnamed gravel road, in some holler or another, a feast would be found, spread out on rickety, rough-shod, homemade picnic tables, scattered outside of an equally rickety clapboard church house. A carload of us college kids would roll up, usually just as the preacher was finishing the blessing over the the food. There, There would be a few dozen adults and kids standing around waiting to dig in. They'd see us pile out of the car, and almost without fail, they would wave us on in and put us at the head of the line. Not only would we get seconds, but we were often sent home with an extra piece of chicken or a slice or two of pie. I remember one country preacher telling us as he ladled some chicken and dumplings onto our plates, this here is what you call a church of barely enough. We don't have much, but what we have ain't nothing. And in the hands of the Lord, why, our little bit of something is something to behold. We have nothing here but five hard biscuits and a couple of small salted fish, the beleaguered disciples tell Jesus. We don't even have enough to feed ourselves for the day, let alone feed all these people. Bring what you have to me, Jesus replies. Then, in actions which sound to Episcopalians remarkably like an open-air Eucharist, Jesus takes the food, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it back to the disciples who then pass on to the people what they have received from Jesus. A multitude is fed, and there are baskets full of leftovers. The disciples didn't have much, but what they had wasn't nothing. And in the hands of the Lord, why, their little bit of something was something to behold. While this story is usually called something like Jesus feeds the multitude, notice that Jesus doesn't produce the food from out of nowhere. And he doesn't even take part in distributing it. The little bit of food he had to work with was what the disciples already had on hand. It wasn't nothing, but it wasn't even close to barely enough. And while I'm sure all of us would love to know the mechanics of how it happened, what we're given instead is an opportunity to ponder baskets of abundance drawn from a small bag with a little bit of something. 
One of the recurring themes in church circles since the beginning of this pandemic has been how some congregations won't survive. Plenty of prognosticators are suggesting up to 30% of congregations across our country will simply cease to exist. Other church watchers have speculated that even in congregations which survived this season, things will have to be fundamentally reordered. The way we do ministry will have to change. And yet, the needs of the world around us will not abate just because our resources may be restricted. The brokenhearted will still need words of encouragement and the support of a community of faith. The hungry will still need to be fed. The poor will still need to have good news preached to them. The homeless will still need a place to sleep. The prisoner, the widow, the orphan, and all those on the margins will still need caretakers, companions, and advocates. The world will still be starving for healing and wholeness, and Jesus is still telling us, his followers, in this time and for this time, you give them something to eat. As I've reflected this week on this gospel story of a feast in a deserted place, I've been reminded once again, the church does not exist for itself. We do not exist to perpetuate an institution, maintain a building, balance a budget, or even meet the needs of the members. We exist to spread a table full of God's love, mercy, and grace in the wilderness of hatred, impatience, and despair. We exist to offer hospitality and holy friendship to those who may never participate in worship or drop a dollar in the offering plate or join in on a parish workday. We exist to be the compassionate body and blood of Christ in the world, doing the work of Jesus who leads us off of the map of certainty and into places of ministry to serve the world for which he died. We exist to give to others what we've received from Jesus, a life so abundant with God's presence that it can only be described as eternal. As we continue to walk together, through these next weeks and months. I pray we will be on the lookout for ways we can share what we have with the world around us. I pray we will not be overwhelmed by circumstances which seem too daunting to engage. I pray we will have the courage to hand all that we have over to Jesus. We never know what Jesus may hand us back. In the face of so much need, what we have may not seem like much, but what we have ain't nothing. And in the hands of the Lord, our little bit of something can become something to behold.
Let us affirm the articles of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and to the world. Grant, Almighty God, for all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died 
that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I appeal to you, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Our liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, 
to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now may the grace of of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.